Thank you very much, Paddy. At the risk of this turning into a mutual admiration society for just a moment, um, can I say that uh, one of the reasons I'm delighted to be here today, and there are many, is to be here again with Paddy Tompkins. As he says, uh, our paths crossed on many occasions, many moons ago, and I can say very honestly that much of what I learned and experienced here in this city with you, Paddy, and your officers um, has both informed and educated me and inspired me for over the years and very much has spurred me on to take on um, my latest challenge in working uh, with all of you and others here today in taking forward the future of policing in Scotland. Um, I don't know when new stops being new, but what I will say is that I have not yet been in this post for two weeks, so I have a lot to learn and a lot to do. But I'm particularly pleased that this conference, this particular conference, is the first that I have attended in that new role. And if I may, before saying something more about the SPA, can I just say a few words about Cyper? Um, because as some of you will know, I've spent a lot of my working life um, working in the interface between academic research, policy makers, um, businesses, organisations, practitioners, communities. And it's sometimes quite a challenging space and it's sometimes quite difficult to broker positive conversations and collaborations. But we have certain areas where we have real exemplars, and I think Cyprus is one, where we see academic researchers coming together across institutions, which is critical, across academic disciplines and boundaries, and critically working closely with policy makers, with our police service, and with others involved in and around our wider uh, policing um, work, and indeed the wider criminal justice community. And I think it's an invaluable resource to have, and I'm really looking forward to working with Nick and others in Cyprus in the period to come, to come, because I think you provide us with just a wonderful insight, not into just what's going on here in Scotland, but critically to what's happening in other parts of the world, so that we can learn from that. The SPA, um, as the Cabinet Secretary has said, has got a very important part to play in working with Police Scotland and others moving forward to address the challenges and the opportunities that lie ahead. Um, and I appreciate, Cabinet Secretary, your very strong commitment to supporting the Scottish Police Authority um, and supporting me as its new chair in taking forward our work. I agree that we do need to have a strong Scottish Police Authority in the period to come. And I do acknowledge the efforts that many have, have made, not least members of the existing board, two of whom are here today, to, to build and develop the work of the SPA. And I want to build on that, but I also want to take the organisation into a new chapter because I think we need to do that. Not least because a lot of focus in the recent past has been on the internal workings of the Scottish Police Authority itself. And that's not where the focus should be. The focus needs to be on policing and the future of policing in Scotland. So it's incumbent on me and others in the SPA to make sure that we get that authority working well so that it can focus on that core purpose, which is that rich combination of challenging and supporting Police Scotland in the period to come. And critically, working to ensure that we build a wider understanding and shared commitment amongst the Scottish public, policymakers, and others with an interest in what that future can and must look like. I think it's possible to do that. I think it's necessary to do that. And I think we, we do that by <coughs> taking a number of steps. And I'm just going to share a few thoughts on this today. I want the SP itself to turn outwards. I think there are many ways in which the authority can do that um, and do that more effectively than has been the case in the past. Some of that is about how we as an organisation, how I as chair, work with stakeholders, work with the public, listen to police officers and police staff and engage with their concerns as effectively as possible. Some of it is about how we conduct our business itself. I have my first meeting as chair next week. Um, and I'm very pleased to say I've been working very closely with Ian Livingston and his team to make sure that we use that board meeting to best effect, to shine a light on the challenges that lie ahead, 
to share where Police Scotland has got to in a very, very challenging um, programme of transformation and change, and also use that board meeting to build wider public debate and understanding around some of the big developments in operational policing that the public need to be engaged in and have an understanding of. Alongside my appointment as chair, we also have a new chief officer in place, Kenneth Hogg, and while I have been focusing on, I suppose, turning outwards, he has been looking inwards and looking to see how we can ensure that the Scottish Police Authority as an organisation has the capability and the capacity and the systems, practices and culture to do its job well going forward. He too has only been in the door a matter of weeks, but I can assure you that he is also working very hard at that task. We're also taking steps soon to build and develop the board itself. There are a number of existing vacancies. Other members will be ending their course of office next year. And I want to make sure that we reach out and bring in people who really share a passion and a commitment to the future of policing in Scotland and can help to take forward the work of the authority in exactly the way I've described, in a way where we step up and play a real leadership role going forward. Um, we'll be putting out uh, initial information about recruitment to the board next week. The process will open early in the new year. And I would ask all of you, with you based in Scotland obviously in particular, to reach out and to share with your networks and contacts the fact that this is one of the most demanding, yes, but potentially also one of the most rewarding areas of public service that people in Scotland can become involved in. Most of all, though, moving forward, what I want to emphasise and what I'd like to share with you today are some core principles about how I think we take forward change and address the challenges ahead in policing in Scotland in the future. And these are principles that I certainly believe apply and should apply to every walk of life, but apply with bells on in terms of where we are now with policing in Scotland. Fundamentally, if we get the right people, the right relationships, and the right trust and confidence in place, then I think there are few limits on what can actually be achieved. There's been a lot of criticism, not just of the SPA, but of many aspects of the debate around policing um, in the recent period. But I have to say, since I took on this position, or certainly since it was announced about a month ago, I have been really very touched and at times quite overwhelmed by the messages of support and goodwill that I've received, not just in terms of me and my role, but actually people who, in lots of walks of life and in lots of leadership roles in Scotland, really, really want to work as part of Team Scotland, if you like, in taking policing forward in the future. Because we have, I think, a very shared, deep and shared belief in Scotland and an understanding of how important our police service is. And for all the noise that there is in the system often, I think most people, given the opportunity, want to work um, to build on that. The Cabinet Secretary touched on the issue of scrutiny, and I want to say just a few words about that before ending, because I think he made a very important point. I believe passionately in openness. I think there's much more that we can and we should do. Um, to create clarity and transparency in the work of the SPA and in how we work with Police Scotland in helping to shine a light on what they are doing. But with scrutiny comes responsibility for all concerned. I've travelled a journey um, in Scotland pre and post devolution and I've seen openness and transparency increase a hundredfold or more. But I think we've still got a way to go as a country to actually make the best of that openness and transparency and to try and construct the, the sort of conversations, debates, and yes, scrutiny 
that really will take us forward in the future. And I think the SP has a really important part to play in ensuring that we try and take that debate up a level um, in the months and years to head and you ahead. And you have my absolute commitment. I'll try and do that. But fundamentally, I say again, I really believe if we get the right people and the right relationships in place, we can do that. Um, the wonderful thing about being involved in this area of work, being involved with police service and others who work with it, is that it's a tremendous basis of shared values and purpose. And if we can build on that, I think we can do a great deal. And my final comment, since we're here in, in the capital city, and since we're nearing the end of 2017, um, this has been quite a special year for Edinburgh. Um, it's the 70th anniversary of Edinburgh's festivals. Um, the product of real vision, drive, determination, a belief that wonderful things could be done and that people could be brought together in difficult circumstances across international boundaries. And we see how that has grown and developed. Um, Edinburgh's festivals now, you may not know this, are second only to the Olympics in terms of the visitor numbers that they attract to this city over the course of the year. But probably a lesser known fact is that this year was also the 250th anniversary of the construction of the Edinburgh and Newtown. Um, in many ways, seen as symbolic, emblematic, if you like, of the Scottish Enlightenment. Again, testament to what can be achieved when there's vision, values, purpose, ambition, shared aspiration. And I think it's really important to see just the wonderful things and remember the wonderful things that have been achieved in our country over the years because people have come together with shared ambition and purpose. And I think we can do that going forward. And since I've mentioned the Scottish Enlightenment, I want to just finally quote from David Hume, not the David Hume who's a member of the SPA board, <laughs> um, but the other one, um, the father of the Scottish Enlightenment, who said that, the truth arises from disagreement amongst friends. That's the kind of debate I think we need to have more of in Scotland. That's the kind of debate I want to encourage the SPA to have going forward. And that's the kind of debate and discussion I want to be fostering with Police Scotland, with Scottish Government, and with many of you in this room and many more besides in the time to come. Thank you for allowing me to speak to you today in my first two weeks in the job, and I look forward to working with you. Thank you.